Hi all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ollie and this is Simply Stitchy. Now, what's the first thing that you look at when you're buying thread for your sewing machine? It's probably going to be the colour. You want it to match your project, right? The next thing that you'll probably want to take into consideration is what kind of thread is it? Is it a thread designed for quilting? Or is it a thread designed for embroidery machines? Or is it an all-purpose thread that you can use for pretty much anything? Are you going to go for a jeans thread or some other kind of heavy duty option? Even the fabric that you're going to be sewing with the thread is going to have a bearing on what thread you choose. Say you want to uh, sew a polyester knit based fabric for instance, you're going to want a polyester thread. Same if you're um, sewing a stretch fabric, you need something that will stretch with it you're going to be looking for polyester. But how about if you want to go historically accurate? Chances are you might want to go for a cotton thread or maybe a silk thread. The thing is, the last thing that you're probably thinking about is how the thread is actually wound onto the spool. And there's two types. You've got straight wound or you've got crisscross. The one that you end up going for is probably, more than anything else, going to be influenced by whatever is available in the store in the colour and the weight or thickness that you need for your project. It isn't going to be based on whether it's straight grain or crisscross. But which one is actually best for your machine and does it matter what type you go for? That's the subject of today's video. Should you go straight round or crisscross? Let's get into it, come on. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is take a closer look at the different kinds of spools. Now the first up is the straight wound or stacked thread spool. Now this is more of the traditional style. This one's been around for generations. Um, originally, it would have been made from wood, but these days they're plastic. Um, they're designed for the thread to come off in that direction and because of that it actually sits on vertical spools and then the thread will just come off in the direction of the needle goes that way. Now it does have a little bit of movement as it spins around on its little pin but that movement is actually swallowed up by the tension mechanism so it's it's insignificant, it doesn't make any difference to the tension of the machine. And that's the way it's supposed to work, a little wibble as it goes. Next up, we have the slightly more modern style of the crisscross thread. Now this is where the thread's wound onto the spool so that it's got like a, a crisscross um, design. Now these are more laid back than your straight wound spool because they are literally designed to lay flat and they go on horizontal spools and what happens is the thread comes off like that. Now if we take a look at that in situ as it sits on the machine the thread pulls off like that and you'll notice that as it does so the spool doesn't move. The only thing that moves is the thread. Now I first became aware of crosswound threads when I was a kid back in the 70s. Um, my mum was constantly complaining about them, but more on that in a minute. What I don't remember is seeing any instructions or pointers coming with this new design to explain why they were different or how you should use them or even what kind of machine you should use them on. So, you know me, I did a bit of digging. The first place I looked was the instruction book for Jerome. He's the Janome QC6260. Now Jerome, as you can see from this picture here, has got a horizontal spool thread, which means obviously it lays flat. Now nowhere in this manual have I been able to found, find anywhere that specifically says what kind of thread spool you should be using. But if we take a look at this picture here, you can see two different styles of reel. You've got the straight wound or the stacked thread and this one which looks like a crisscross thread. 
If we go even further back, this is a manual for the Deluxe Electric Sewing Machine and it looks from the style of the booklet to be from around the 1950s. Now the Deluxe Electric Sewing Machine is basically a Singer 15 clone and it would have been made in Japan. Now if we have a look at page 7, there's a little picture of a vertical spool machine with a straight round spool sitting on it. But even so, this doesn't specifically say whether you should use straight round or crisscross. Now that could be because crisscross threads weren't a thing back in the 50s, so it just wasn't an issue. I've been pulled up a little bit in the comments about focusing too much on old machines. Apparently it's not helpful. So in order to stay fully inclusive, we're going to look at some slightly more modern machines than the Singer Simple behind me here. First up, the Brother CS7000i. Here's a picture of it. This is a vertical spool machine and the instruction manual is printed in 2019, so that's, that's fairly new. Now if we have a check on page 13, it shows a straight round reel sitting on the vertical spool. But it doesn't specifically say that that's the only style that you should be using. Next up we've got the Brother Innovis NQ1700E. Wow, this looks like a fantastic machine. Better still, the manual is one of the most in-depth ones that I've ever seen and it's easy to read. So points to Brother for that one. Okay, this one's got a horizontal spool pin and again from the instructions that you see in the manual, it doesn't specifically say if you should use a crosswound thread or a straight one. But what it does say is that you should make sure that you use the correct spool cap for the thread that you happen to be using. Hold on to that thought, we'll cover that in slightly more detail a little bit later on in today's video. Next up, my absolute dream machine, the Janome Continental M7. Again. The manual doesn't set stipulate whether you should be using horizontal threads or vertical threads but if you check out the pictures in the manual some of those threads that they've illustrated there have some definite crisscross ish formats. So what did we learn from that little exercise? None of the manuals that I checked, not for the Janome, the Singers, the Brothers, any of them specifically mentioned which way the spools that you use on the machine should be wound. Now as I said before in the case of the the older machine um, it's probably not mentioned because the only thread that you could get would have been straight wound so it just wasn't an issue but that doesn't explain why it doesn't specifically state a preference in the modern manuals unless of course it just isn't really that big of a deal the thing is, it isn't that big of a deal because it's not the way your spools are wound that matters, it's how you use the spools. Remember what I said from right at the very start of the video? This style has to spin as the thread comes off the reel. This type has to stay perfectly still while the thread comes off the reel. And the reason for that is pretty simple. It's all down to tension. If I try to use a crisscross thread on a reel like this one on Grandma, she throws a hissy fit every time. And it was the same for my mum's machine back in the 70s. You remember at the start of the video, I said that these reels in particular used to drive her around the twist. Well, the reason was because they used to play havoc with her tension and not just on the machine. If we have a closer look as to why that is for a minute, this is a crisscross reel of um, thread and it's got the smaller um, ends. If we put that on grandma's vertical spool pin for a second, it, it kind of sits proud to the, to the, um, the pillar of the machine it's not sitting flat. Now what happens is, as that spins off the reel, whoops, 
it wibbles only the wibble on this reel isn't so much of a slight wibble like it is on a um, the straight wound spool it's more of a 6.5 on the Richter scale and if you're sewing at speed what happens is as this is spinning and the threads following the crisscross of the reel you're getting dips and heights I don't know if that's coming up on uh, the camera because it's dark colour but basically what it's doing is it's going up and down like that and it's not keeping the constant tension that you need on a sewing machine and all those wibbles are going to be causing a problem with your tension down here now if we compare that to the straight round thread notice it sits flat it's right on top of the the sewing machine there and as the thread pulls off it goes straight and it keeps oops it keeps that straight tension if we check out another style of crisscross thread this is actually um, a gutterman reel and you notice how the base is flat if we pop that on grandma for a minute now even though it's still following the crisscross as it unwinds the fact that it's got a flat base keeps it a little bit more parallel to the base of the machine so you don't get the ups and downs quite so much the tension will stay constant grandma will be a happy bunny so too will i so it's not so much the crisscross that's causing the problem it's rather the design of the spool and because of that you're probably thinking that you shouldn't use crisscross spools on a vertical pin but that's not the case at all you can you just have to change the way that you use the spool if we take a look at Roger Wilco here he's nice and simple he's actually got a spare spool holder at the base of the machine and you can pop your crisscross thread on that grab a clip you can use a bulldog clip or a sewing clip pop that around the top vertical spool pin and then you just put the thread inside the clip and thread as normal Oops. now what that will do is it will actually keep the tension on the thread for you and keep that running straight so you don't get the dips as this wibbles if you don't have a handy second spool pin a mug will do exactly the same job you can just pop your thread in the mug if you find that the thread's getting caught on your stitch guide or any other kind of mechanism you've got on the front of the machine you can actually put the mug at the back it's up to you but that'll work and it will keep your tension constant now obviously doing a DIY method like that is a little bit of a hack um, you can actually get external thread stands which will do the same job and will probably do a better job of it as well I'll put a link in the description box um, to a thread stand for you it's an Amazon link I'm an Amazon affiliate but as always it's not going to cost you any extra and there's no obligation to use the link I do appreciate it if you do though because I get a little bit of a referral fee and it does help support me and the channel but as I said no obligation but I do appreciate it if you do this is Jerome and he's got a horizontal spool holder and it really doesn't matter whether I use straight round thread or crisscross thread but what I do have to be careful of is these all horizontal spool machines will come with these these are known as spool caps and they come in different sizes and the size you use depends on the size of the reel you've got and it's not just me saying that remember from the manual for the brother Innovus NQ1700 it said specifically make sure you use the right cap for the spool of thread well there's a reason for that and I'm going to show you why this is the spool holder on Jerome and as you can see it sits into a little bit of a dip 
in the machine and as you go towards the front of the machine it slopes upwards. Threads fit on the machine like so and then it's just a case of picking the cap that fits the spool. Now what you want to do is you want to get one that's a little bit bigger than the spool okay and then you make sure that it's pushed all the way to the back now the idea is is these caps hold that spool of thread totally still so it can't move but what you want to make sure is that not only is this bigger than the reel but that there's enough space between this and the base of the machine so that the thread can move Oops freely around the reel. Now you notice on here this is sticking every so often this cap is stopping the thread from coming out because it's getting jammed on that slope. So swap the spool cap for a slightly smaller one. Again make sure it's keeping that reel totally still and then if you can find the thread you'll notice that it moves smoothly off the end of the reel. If we try that with a straight spun reel, whoops, pop it on, grab your spool cap, and let's see how that works. Oops. If we try that with the type of spool that gives grandma such a problem, we pop that on the vertical spool holder. You see how the reel, the, the style of this reel, it comes right up to the edge of the spool uh, pin. Well, what happens is that means it's literally right on top of that slope. So in order to stop this reel from moving, you have to get the smallest cap you've got and pop it in like that because otherwise if you use a cap that's bigger than this reel you'll stop the thread from moving smoothly and it won't be able to clear the end like so. The biggest problem people who've got horizontal spool pin machines have is not using the right size of uh, spool cap or not using it the right way around depending on the spool that they're using. Remember what I said at the start of the video, if you've got a vertical spool pin the reel has to spin as the thread's being pulled off. For horizontal spool pin machines that reel doesn't matter if it's a straight wound or crisscross has got to stay perfectly still. Another thing people tend to forget about, particularly with straight wound spools, is that on the top of the spools there's a little notch on this reel, it's there. And what that notch does is when you buy the thread new, you'll find that it, the end is caught in that little notch so that it doesn't unwind itself from the reel. The thing is, because of the way horizontal spool pin machines work, is you have to make sure that that notch stays well out of the way of the thread path because if you've got your reel like that and your threads coming off the end it gets stuck in the notch like it's done there. Now what you need to do when you're using a straight wound reel on this machine is make sure your spool cap is bigger than the end of the reel so that you can pop it on the end and then the thread will just wind over the top of the cap and the reel and that notch keeps out of the way. If you don't have a cap that is bigger than your reel, which you know some of you might not, the way to keep that out of the thread path is to turn the reel upside down and put it on so that that notch is at the back of the machine and then you can use a smaller cap to hold the reel in place and the thread 
will just pull off smoothly. Now although all horizontal spool machines will have caps, they don't all look the same as this. Uh, the Singer Simples looks like this um, and it's actually two sizes in one. You've got this side for smaller spools and this side for larger spools but they all work in exactly the same way. Um, if you find that you've lost your spools you can actually buy them from sewing machine retailers from Amazon anywhere like that. Now I'm not going to put a link in the description box because there are so many different styles of these. The one you get needs to be the one that is suitable for your particular machine. Um, if you're in any doubt, check with your local dealer or drop a note or an email to the manufacturer and ask them what part you should be looking for for your machine. So it really doesn't matter if you use a crisscross thread or a straight spun thread on your sewing machine. What matters is that you make sure that the tension on your sewing machine stays constant and to do that make sure you use the right spool caps and make sure that if you've got a wibbly thread like this one that you use it on an external thread stand. I hope you liked today's video. If you did give it a thumbs up and why not check out some of the other videos that I've got on my channel coming up in these links any minute now or you could even check the links in the description box below. And why not subscribe and click that little bell so that YouTube can let you know when I upload another video. Whatever video you do go and check out next, I hope to see you back here for the next one. In the meantime, whatever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing it with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.